You are gonna go fucking broke trading. Listen up, chances are trading is going to make you go to zero instead of a million dollars. I'm going to make sure you know my five worst mistakes from day one so you literally time travel to riches by the end of this video. Let's fucking go. I made the dumbest mistake ever as a beginner trader. The Nick now would have literally slapped the shit out of that old Nick for making such a rookie mistake. Setting and forgetting about my trade. That was what I did. I would take a treat, do something else like play Counter-Strike or League of Legends and come back to my chart once my game is finished. And I would lose a treat not knowing why the hell I lost. Look here, you are risking money in the markets and the markets are unpredictable. The news can happen at any time. And if you're not managing your trades while the trade is open, how do you know if some black swan event occurs and how are you going to manage your risk in that scenario. When I was younger, I remember I placed a trade on gold and I left the trade running. Setting and forgetting thinking that the trade will run just fine on its own. So I went to Netflix and chill, fast forward two hours after the movie and oh fuck, SL hit. Why? Because there was a resistance I didn't take note of while the trade was forming. Setting and forgetting maximizes your losses and minimizes your gains. Being present while your trade is running allows you to maximize your gains and minimize your losses. When you are actively managing your positions that are in the green, you can go risk-free by putting stop loss at break even so you don't end up losing when the market reverses. You can take partials when price hits a certain key level so you de-risk your position to take profits off the table. You can also cut a losing trade short if technicals and fundamentals is not going your way. Now, you must be extremely focused when you are trading in order to notice any changes that happens in the market that could affect your positions. The moral of the story here is to always be present in the markets at all time while you are actively trading. As a beginner trader, Earning money is the most rewarding thing that you can come across while trading. It gives you that dopamine rush. Guess what? Stop focusing on that. Focus on percentages instead of numbers. This is especially common for those handling larger sums of capital, be it personal funds or a prop firm account. The reason for this is simple. Your brain isn't wired to take monetary losses. You'll feel shit about yourself when you're in a drawdown. And I remember when I first started out trading, I was extremely happy with a $100 win, $200 win every single trade that I placed. But when my account grew bigger, my wins did not grow together with the account because I was focusing purely on the monetary aspect. However, if you focus on the percentage goal instead, you will be able to scale your account way faster. Well, this is thanks to the eighth wonder of the world, compound interest. When you focus on numbers, what you will get is a linear growth in your account. But when you focus on percentages, what you will get instead is an exponential growth in your account, which will help you reach your desired account size much faster than you think. On top of that, it will be easier for you to handle a loss, especially if you're managing a funded account that reaches over six figures in capital. Imagine losing $1,000 every single trade. Bro, come on. That's someone's minimum wage that you just lost like that. But if you think of it in percentages, it's just 1% of your account. No biggie. What looking at percentages does is that it takes a load off your brain from doing mental gymnastics, not having to convince yourself on how it is okay to lose $1,000, $2,000, or even $10,000 per trade because it is just 1% of your large account. The benefits of looking in terms of percentages instead of numbers is that you'll be able to trade with your emotions in check. This also prevents you from overtrading, revenge trading, and going ballistic like I did in the intro. Another very bad habit that I had when I was relatively new to trading about one year in, what I did was I strategy hopped like mad. This set me back about six months in my trading career. Imagine the opportunity cost that it has cost me. 
That's six months with zero income. I realized after six months that the reason why I wasn't making any progress in my trading is because I never had the opportunity to master one singular strategy and be a beast at it. I didn't know the ins and the outs of all the strategies that I've learned online. At that time, I probably had like 12 or 13 strategies under my belt, but I couldn't execute any one of them to perfection, resulting in me taking lower probability trades most of the time. What you wanna do is look for one strategy that you are the most comfortable with and stick with it. Don't fall victim to the shiny object syndrome, where you are in a continual search of better strategies to use. It's going to be a relentless cycle of finding the next best thing. What you want to do is focus on one to two pairs and use only one strategy for an extended period of time. Focus on constantly improving your craft at that strategy tweaking it along the way until it becomes perfect for you to the point where nobody doubt the way you trade because you know it best. Now, how many of you here ever risk trying to hold a trade for days, thinking that it will keep going your way? Same, I did the exact same thing that I mentioned multiple times. I used to trade on the 15 second charts and I always had a one is to five risk to reward ratio. But when price is about to hit my take profit, I always extend further and further to some unreasonable amount of risk reward ratio. Something like one is to 30 risk reward ratio or even a one is to 50 risk reward ratio. This was me trying to hit that big home run trade. I fell victim to this trade management style because all I wanted to do was earn more money and bank more money on the trade that was running well. It caused me to become greedy. Sooner or later, the trade would reverse against my trade, stopping me out leaving profits on the table. So to my younger self, stop doing this right now. Look here, I know the goal of a trader is to make money in the markets, but bringing your emotions in to try to make the most out of your trades will not result in your account growing in the long term. In fact, it will cause you to hit many SLs before you hit that one big home run trade. Is it really worth it? No. It's not worth hurting your trading psychology. It's not worth leaving profits on the table. What you should do instead is actually stick to your risk reward ratio that you have planned in your strategy. Don't deviate away from it. Don't be greedy. Be realistic with your targets. Be content when a trade that you take hits a simple one is to three risk reward ratio. I will take multiple one is to three risk reward ratio trade setups every single day over a one is to 100 once a month or even once a year. The last mistake that I made was one that will speak to many of you. You will only need to spend a maximum of two to four hours a day trading. Those that just started out, you are staring at your phone or your monitor from the moment you wake up till the moment you sleep, hunting for setups to take regardless whether they are high probability or not. The truth of the matter is that we want to trade for financial freedom and more importantly to me, time freedom. If you're staring at the charts 12 hours a day and you're barely making even $100 to $200 on your account every single day, you are way better off working at a restaurant which pays you $12 to $15 an hour for 10 to 12 hours straight because it is guaranteed, whereas trading isn't. You must understand that throughout the trading day, there are periods of high volume and low volume sessions. Low volume timings are timings like your Asian session, your London Lao session, your post New York session. These sessions won't provide you with high probability setups for you to make money with. So if you're watching the charts throughout these timings, you are essentially wasting your time. Stick with the high volume sessions like your London Open and your New York Open. This is when the market is the most active, providing the highest probability setups. And even if you were to trade both high volume sessions, they last two hours a session max. So that means the maximum time that you should spend on trading on the charts is four hours. No more. This gives you the time freedom to go work on yourself. One example is you can go to the gym, work out, build your muscles, review your trades, work on a side hustle, and the list goes on. With that being said, I hope you guys found this video valuable and thank you so much for your watching and staying all the way to the end. Do subscribe for more content like this to help more traders like you who are trying to increase their profitability in this industry. And I'll see you in the next video.